a eight year old Tennessee and a five and six year old Maryland. Oh my gosh, what is that thumbs up doing? It's back. So we got lucky, as you know, we, we do with one or two brands. Uh, Barrel sent us another bottle, and I know you're like, oh no, Barrel, they're going to review an expensive bottle. Not today, folks. Barrel has decided to have an entry level product that hits at $55. It's still five years. So, right on that $10 an age, uh, $10 a year proof to value ratio, year ratio. Yes. We'll get into it in a moment, but that year is, you know, typical to oh, barrel. Yeah. That is the youngest right. bourbon that went into this blend. So there is some older, some older age stock in there. Yeah. So this is called Barrel Foundation. It is designed to be really an entry level product into the barrel lineup because they realize spending eighty to ninety dollars on multiple batches multiple times a year can be a lot for people, and you want to try and see what they have before you go all in and become a crazy barrel fan like Chuck and I. So welcome Barrel Foundation. And also supposedly they're saying this makes one killer old fashioned. So, I mean, it's got a lot of potential, I think. Yeah, I think this is supposed to be approachable both from, you know, as your point to the at the dollar level, but also approachable from the taste and, and proof point. So this is all the other barrel products are were uh Cash strength. This one yes. is coming in at 100 proof. Yes. So yeah. So they 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 dropped the price. They dropped the proof uh, point. And like Chuck was saying, in true barrel fashion, they have to put five years because that's the youngest product. But in this, once again, barrel. Thank you for the awesome card. This blend is made up of eight year old Kentucky, five six nine year old Indiana, eight year old Tennessee. And five and six year old Maryland, which I can only assume means Sagamore spirits out of Maryland. So again, hundred proof, uh, five year youngest, fifty fifty five dollar MSRP. Let's see what we think. Getting a little uh, brown sugar on the nose. Yeah. There's oak on the nose, which I usually don't get for, you know something claiming five years. But again, like we just said, there's a lot of older yeah, stuff maybe, in there. But Maybe it's that eight-year Dickel that... If it's Dickel, it could be the Tennessee Distillers. True. I don't know. I mean, overall, maybe a little light, uh, but still plenty there to offer for a 100 proof. Yeah. It's not as in-your-face robust as the barrel-proof ones, which I wouldn't expect it to be, but there's still a lot of flavors, just a little more delicate. Um, yeah, nope. nothing, you know, not overly grain forward, no dough notes, like maybe just a yeah. little bit of like toasted corn. Mm-hmm. You're good nose. Like you're going to smell it and you're going to be like, hmm, that's good. So right off the bat, vanilla caramel, just first thing that hits you. Super sweet in the front. Yeah, I guess some nuttiness, um, not like a beam nuttiness, but just some some walnut pecan maybe. He can. Mm-hmm. Powerful, just a for hundred proof. Just I'd say a, a a robust flavor. Yes, it's one of those. Even at a hundred proof, I get more of a Kentucky hug on it than I get on some one twenty proofs. Some of the Elijah Craig's, I get less of a Kentucky hug than you get on this, and it's just those. Baking spices at the end, so your nutmeg, uh, some cardamom, uh, not a lot of cinnamon, uh, and then some drying oak, uh, all getting the back of your throat and coming down and giving you a nice Kentucky hug. But there's got a long finish for a hundred proof. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that um, your description kind of sets it up well. I mean, I'm, I've even got some tingling just kind of on the back of the back of the throat. Mm-hmm. Um, drying oak kind of was lingering back there as well as some of that, um, those baking spices. Yeah. And as far as the nuttiness, I'm going to go with like peanut shells, maybe walnut shells, but it's definitely like 
nut shells, not the meat of the nut. Uh, and then that's what kind of leads into the dry and spiciness too. Yeah. And so some of the, some of the shells or like, to me, it's a bit, a little bit of a bitterness on the backside of that palate, which yeah. is kind of what I was equating to. Yeah. But yeah, overall, I would say it's good. I mean, $55, $60, like this is probably going to be something that's going to be on people's shelves. Should be on people's shelves. Should be. Yeah. I think at $55, this is, I, I mean, we can't see into their minds, but I think this is like, this is a nice blend of a hundred proof and an approachable price. Um, different from the batches, different from yes. their other private releases. I, I, you know, it's not going to replace that. Um, so if you're a fan of those, you still might like this. If you want a, a hundred proofer on the, either a palette opener, something to look for, uh, for a, for a guest, if they, don't necessarily want to want to drink your 118 proof uh, bourbons or for a cocktail. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm I haven't had a chance to to you know drink this side by side against Knob Creek Nine Year. It's one of our favorites. Um, wait, 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 where's that? Where, where where's mine? I don't know. Can't reach through the screen and give it to you. But it makes one have an old fashioned. I can tell you that. Rude. I missed the uh, old fashioned taste tonight. Okay. <laughs> well, how is it, TJ? Tell us. It's it's delicious. The barrel product comes through, uh, which I think is always a sign of a good old fashioned is that you can balance the bourbon with the sweetness. And I think that's why they made the uh, extra spiciness to it and everything like that, that it'll be able to balance against the cocktail. I'm sure it is absolutely amazing in like a Manhattan or something that is very bourbon forward and doesn't have that sweetness. Uh, but it makes a heck of an old fashioned. I have my wife to thank for that, but you know. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think this is gonna be your entry into barrel for people that are scared of it. The thing that it brings to question is what's gonna happen to the Stellum line? Like, is that gonna go away? Uh, because I always thought that was kind of the entry into their brand, but I guess like when you see Stellum on the Shelf as a regular consumer, you might not know that that is part of barrel. Uh, so it, this way they get the barrel name on bars and things like that, which I think is what this is really made for is if I own a bar or a restaurant, I can justify having this on the shelf. I can't justify having multiple iterations of batches. I can have this. People can make cocktails with this and everything like that and expose the general consumer to it because that's where a lot of people that don't have time to watch YouTube channels and all that stuff are going to be like, Oh, that was really good. I need to get that at home. Yeah. I think it's, um, I think for what they intended, I think it's great. I, I think, you know, one of the questions on the Stellum lineup, maybe it would be nice to, to know their answer is the Stellum lineup performing as well as they expected. And they just, they're finding more room in the barrel brand and they have the stocks to support it. Um, so they decided to also bring this out, you know, the Barrel Foundation to further, you know, bolster the the Barrel brand itself. Um, or is the is the Stellum lineup underperforming? And this was their opportunity to kind of get, you know, back into that um, entry level bourbon. Either way, I think it's a great move for Barrel uh, expanding. Yeah. But it doesn't sacrifice, you know, the rest of what they're doing, the quality there, um, and the batches and the and the rest of the stuff that we love. So. Um, I'm excited for more people to try barrel. I think this would be, yeah. you know, if you're a fan of Knob Creek nine year, the Bardstown white label, the origin series, um, this is right in that wheelhouse. Um, I'd love to blind 1792 bottle and bond is another one. Um, s similar price point, similar proof point, um, mm -hmm. same proof point. And I think it'd be an interesting, interesting blind that, uh, that we should do on the channel. So with that, Barrel, thank you once again for sending us a bottle. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. And normally this would be the time that, you know, we say cheers and power bourbon and see you next time. But because we happen to both have the other $50 bottle that came out this year that everybody's going crazy for, I mean, it wouldn't be polite to our viewers to not side by side compare these two and give you our true recommendation of the two so if you want to turn off now go for it i understand it's going to make this video slightly longer than uh you're used to but if you want to stick around and see what we think here we go
Yeah, and so to be fair, if you're not familiar with the Bardstown Origin series, this is a six-year product, a little bit higher rye overall in the mash bill, um, and all all six year as opposed to you know barrels coming in with a little bit of older stuff and obviously more diversified in their uh, origin. I'm going to say on the nose, the Bardstown White Label has a more powerful nose, but it's predominantly mm -hmm. corn. Uh, of the two so i don't know i don't know which one i like more i think in robustness um maybe similar i mean I get maybe a little bit more like a, a honey sweet and less the brown sugar on the bardstown mm -hmm. and then i definitely get maybe just a little bit more grain yeah i think the for like power bardstown takes it but the barrel has a more depth and complexity and well roundness nose so as far as like what i want to smell i'm gonna go back. yeah that's a bias it's like the slimmest of margins um i'd yeah. agree with you i think it's just a little bit more complex a little bit more of that rich dark sugar um mm -hmm. that i look for yeah but both both on the nose like i said uh, it was close uh oh uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. To me, it's not even close. Like, not even close. The barrel has a uh, complexity and everything to it. The Bardstown is sharp. It's harsh. It's got ethanol. It's got the corn. I've never tasted the Bardstown and been like, oh, that's young compared to the barrel it's young i mean i'm not saying it's bad it's it's by yeah, its own yeah. i think it's amazing and i still say this bar sound is better than most blends like and i've had some single barrel picks but compared to these two those older bourbons are coming in and shining and wow it is so much better it really does it takes off that youngness um it, it reminds, you know, the Bardstown, it's, it's like, uh, you know, Wilderness Trail was like this for me. Their six year was a pretty good product, but it wasn't until they hit that eight year, you were just like, oh, there it is. Um, and that I think is still a testament to barrels blending that mm -hmm. they, you know, we don't know the percentages of that eight and nine year stock that are in here. Um, I mean, it could be very little, but whatever they, whatever amount is in there, it really does give it that little bit extra depth. A little bit more oak, a little bit more richness as far as the caramel and the vanillas, um, and it softens that grain note, and that's yeah. where I think the it's it's just you know I, I tilt oh I guess my bottles are this direction so I'm tilting the yeah to, to the barrel foundation. Yep. Well, there you have it. If you have the Bardstown Origin White Label and you're a fan, I mean, I would say you probably should go out find that barrel foundation and give them a side by side now again i will always say with the caveat we did not do this blind we will get around to doing it blind so tune in for a future episode we'll throw like four of these things blind but here tonight without a doubt barrel takes it um i at least have an excuse as chuck knows i'm always a fanboy of the newest thing that comes out if you watch the episode you know that but this barrel is that good and chuck's usually not that type of person so when he's on board you know it's good. All right. With that, cheers, and we'll see you next time. Stay neat.